Section 2.3, Models and Applications. So we talked about linear equations previously. Well, now we're going to apply some of those linear equations. So example one, find a linear equation to solve the following unknown quantities, or for those quantities. One number exceeds another number by 17, and their sum is 31. Okay, well, we don't know what those numbers are. We're not given a variable. We have to come up with the equation. So I'm going to call x my first number. All right, x is going to be my first number. And I'm going to call y my second number. All right, so one of these numbers is 17 bigger than the other. It exceeds it. So I'm going to go with x equals y plus 17. Okay, that takes care of our first fact. One number exceeds another by 17. And their sum is 31, which means if we take x plus y, we should get 31. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a method called substitution. We have a system. We have, we have two equations in this way. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in y plus 17. So this is going to be y plus 17 plus y equals 31. Everywhere my x was, I'm replacing it with y plus 17 because I have this relationship between those two. This is a linear equation. If we combine like terms, this would be 2y plus 17 equals 31. Subtracting 17 from both sides, we get 14 equals 2y. Dividing by 2, we find that y equals 7. Now, there were no domain restrictions, but it is worth checking. One number is 7. Well, next I have the fact that x equals y plus 17, and since y is 7, x must be 24. If I take these two numbers, is one of them 17 more than the other? Well, yes, x is 17 more, because we have 7 plus 17 will give us 24. And also, if we sum those two together, we get 31. So, that is verifying in context that these criteria are met. Example two, there are two cell phone companies that offer different packages. Company A charges a monthly service charge or fee of $34 plus five cents per minute of talk time. Company B charges a monthly service fee of $40 plus four cents per minute talk time. Part A, write a linear equation that models the packages offered by both companies. Okay, so I'm going to call this cost A the cost for company A is going to be $34 plus 5 cents per minute. So I'm going to go ahead and use T as my variable here, where T is time in minutes. And a lot of times in our function notation, we might say something like this. The cost of company A for a certain number of minutes all right, well, the cost for company B for a certain number of minutes will be $40 for our service fee plus four cents per minute. Right, there are two equations. Part B, if the average number of minutes used each month is $1,160, which company offers the better plan? Well, let's find the cost for company A of $1,160. That'll be 34 plus 0 0.05 times 1160. So that cost would be at 5 cents a minute for 1160 minutes. That would be 1160.0. Nope, that's not right. There we go, 58. So 34 plus 58, which would be 92. $92. Okay, so company A would cost $92. Now for company B, same number of minutes, 0, 04 times 1160, 40 plus 0 0.04 times 1160 would be $86.40. 
and that is our cost. So in this case, company B, if our average number of minutes is 1160 minutes, company B has the better deal. Okay, well now if the average number of minutes is 420, all right, we're going to do the same thing but with 420 minutes. 34.0 uh, plus 0 0.05 times 420 minutes. Okay, that would be $55. And for company B, 40 plus 0 0.04 times 420 minutes. That would be 56.8 minutes, or a cost, dollars. So 56.6.80. So in that case, company A has a much better deal. Okay, by a buck eighty. So the question is, for how many minutes of talk time would yield, would we have the same equal monthly statements for both companies? Well, to do that, we're going to set our two equations equal. So 40 plus 0 0.04t. I'm going to subtract 0.04t from both sides. Okay, well that would be 34 equals 0 0.01t oh, plus, I keep switching those, 40, so subtracting 40 from both sides, 0.01t would be equal to 6, and dividing both sides by 0 0.01, they would be equal if the average talk time or the, if we had minutes of talk time that were 300 minutes exactly. All right, example three, it takes Andrew 30 minutes to drive to work in the morning. He drives home using the same route, but it takes 10 minutes longer, and he averages 10 miles per hour less in the morning. How far does he drive to work? Okay, so this is actually a distance, rate, and time problem. Okay, so we have the equation distance equals rate times time. Now the distance doesn't change. The distance does not change because he's driving to work and from work. All right, so we're actually going to have two equations here. And I'm going to go ahead and convert these into hours because it is in 10 miles per hour. So the rate in the morning, we don't know, but we know the time. The time is one half of an hour. So one half R. Now at the end of the day, the distance is the same. The rate is what's different. He's going 10 miles an hour less than in the morning, and the time is 10 minutes longer. Okay, so that would actually mean 40 minutes which is two-thirds of an hour. So this is two-thirds R minus twenty-thirds. Okay, now we can use this to solve for the rate, how fast he drives when it takes him 30 minutes. So if we set these two equal to each other, one-half R equals two-thirds R minus twenty-thirds. Let's go ahead and clear fractions, multiply everything by 6, which would give us 3r equals 4r minus 40. All right, subtracting 4r from both sides, negative r equals negative 40, and his rate is 40. So his rate is 40 miles per hour when it takes him 30 minutes. Let's go back into that first equation. That's when it took half an hour. Well, if our rate is 40, 
then the distance is 20, 20 miles. So how long is it, how far is it to drive to work? 20 miles. Example four, the perimeter of a rectangular outdoor patio is 54 feet. The length is three feet greater than the width. What are the dimensions of the patio? What we need to do is come up with an equation that we can relate perimeter, length, and width. And we have just that formula, two times the length plus two times the width. Okay, and that perimeter is 54. So let's just go ahead and write this. 54 equals 2L plus 2W. Now the second piece of information we're given is that the length is three feet greater than the width. So that L equals W plus three. So let's substitute that into this second equation into the first one, replacing L. So 54 equals two times W plus three plus 2w. Distributing that we get 2w plus 6 plus 2w. Okay, subtracting, oh, combining those, we'll do 4w plus 6. It's 54. Subtracting 6. So 48 equals 4w, which makes w equal 12. Oh, and we are talking in feet. So our width is 12 feet. Now we know that the length is 3 more than that, so it is 15 feet using that second equation we had. All right, next, the perimeter of a tablet of graph, paper probably, is 48 inches squared. Mm, that is probably supposed to say area. No, there should not be a squared there. The perimeter of a tablet of graph paper is 48 inches. Graph paper is 48 inches. The length is 6 inches more than the width. Find the area of the graph paper. All right, so we need to do more than just find the length and the width. We need to find the area. All right, so again, our perimeter formula is 2L plus 2W. And the length is 6 inches more than the width. It's going to be a very similar question here. Our perimeter is 48. And that will be 2 times our length. Well, just as we did earlier, the length is 6 inches more than the width. So this is W plus 6 plus 2W. So distributing again, 2W plus 12 plus 2W again equals 48, which gives us 4W plus 12 equals 48. Subtracting 12 from both sides, we see that 4w equals 36 and w equals 9. So our width is 9 inches, which makes our length, because it's 6 longer, 15 inches which means our area is 9 times 15, or 135 inches squared. All right, last question, example 6. Find the dimensions of a shipping box, given the length is twice the width, the height is 8 inches, and the volume is 1,600 inches cubed. All right. Well, because we have volume here, we actually want to relate the width, the length, and the height, and the volume, all four of those things. Well, we know that volume is length times width times height. The height is 8 inches. We know that. And the volume is 1,600. 
Now the length is twice the width. That means L equals 2W. So let's fill in all the information we have. We'll leave L alone times or the length is twice the width. So actually I'm going to replace L with 2W times W equals 8. All right, which is 16W squared equals 1600. All right, dividing by 16, we get, actually, let's do this. Let's bring this up here. That means 100 equals W squared. Taking the square root of both sides to eliminate our squared will be plus or minus 10 equals W. Well, obviously, our width cannot be negative, so we're only going to deal with the positive version of that. So our width equals 10 inches. Our length is twice that, so it is 20 inches. And our height, we already knew, was 8 inches. So if you multiply all three of those, we should get a volume of 1,600. 10 times 20 times 8 is 1600, so this matches the description we were given. Alright, that brings us to the end of this section on applications and some modeling.